Hi everyone, um, I'm just going to put up a work example video about uh, inverse operations really. So the key kind of questions that we're looking at being able to answer are things like this. So where we have um, exponentials and logarithms maybe involved in the same equation or where we have say an exponential and we want to get to the x value that's here. Now, a key, the key idea here is that um, exponential functions and logarithms, they're inverse operations. So inverse operations, we've looked at a few um, of these, but um, we said that you know multiplying by three, it has an inverse operation, which is dividing by three. Now on a graph, um, what this kind of means, the graph of say three X looks like this. So this is 3x, um, and then on the other hand, the graph of x on 3 looks more like this. Okay. So what it means for these functions to be inverse, and this is true for all inverse operations, is that they have a line of symmetry down this middle here. But it essentially means that the x and y components are able to, able to swap here. So if we have, for instance, here, this point here is x equals 6, and obviously 6 divided by 3 equals 2, like that. Um, then, it's also going to be true that when x equals 2, y is going to be 6. So they have these kind of two points here that are swapped over. Now, logarithms do exactly the same thing. So with logarithms and exponentials, if we have our axes, um, you might remember the exponential function looks like this. What? Like this, it goes through um, 1. And on the other hand, the logarithm function, which is the inverse, it comes up and goes like this. So again, we get this line of symmetry, if I've drawn it symmetrically, line of symmetry going through, um, and these points here that have basically the opposite um, coordinates all around. So, Okay, so we can use this, we can use um, these inverse functions and we can use them to solve, solve equations. So, um, now remember that if e to the x equals y, then this is the same as saying that x is natural log of y. So these are the same way around. But another way that we can think about arriving at the second equation is um, through inverse operations and cancelling. So if I take log of both sides here, log here, log here, um, what I get is that log of e cancels out. Now we can think of this in terms of um, this exponent coming out the front according to that exponent rule that we have. So it becomes x and then natural log of e and natural log of e is 1. Or we just think whenever we have log and it's of an exponential we always just get this index here. So it becomes x equals log of y. Um, so, something like log of e to the 2x minus x squared just equals 2x minus x squared. Yeah. Um, if we have other things involved, so if we have a log of 3e to the 2x minus x squared, okay, so we've got a multiplier of 3, in there we need to be sometimes a little bit careful. In this case, not too careful because um, this is just the same as log of 3 plus log of e to the 2x minus x squared. And so this would be equal to log of 3 as a constant. So this is just equal to some number, a little bit more than 1. And then plus this 2x minus So the log and the e together cancel out. These operations cancel out. Okay, so when we're doing questions, back to here, the questions that we're doing. So we can, with these, um, in this case we've got e to a log, and these operations also cancel each other out. So as with the e to log to e, e to the log of anything, x squared plus 1, just equals that anything. So in this case, we've got 3 as a multiplier. It's multiplying through by this here. 
and we've got cancelling operations there. So that becomes x minus 2 here, and so it's just 3 times x minus 2. Remember that um, this is going to be in brackets, folks. It's going to be in brackets. So this equals y plus 1. If we want to solve for x, which is uh, not what I said we wanted to do, but if we're solving for x in these situations, so trying to get x equals, then the next steps I'd do would be x minus 2 equals y plus 1 on 3. So dividing by the 3 there. And then finally, we get our x equals y plus 1 on 3 plus 2. So this would be my final um, result for that one. So the key thing that we use here is just that e to log cancels out. Again, if we had something different, if we have, say, e to the 3 log of x squared plus 1, in this case, again, we probably want to do something with this 3. So often, uh, probably the easiest or most straightforward thing to do is move that 3 up to here. And so in that case, we get e to the log of x squared plus 1 cubed. So remember, um, this rule comes from our log laws. And then we get the cancelling out of these, and so it becomes x squared plus 1 cubed. That's probably the most straightforward way to go. Okay, let's continue on with these questions. So in this case here, I want to solve for x. And so what I need to do is be able to get x out of this exponential function thing that's happening. So... So, 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 so. I can um, first get rid of the 3. So I have e to the x minus 2 equals y minus 4 on 3. Um, now the next step I want to do is to cancel out the exponent. And so I do that by applying log to both sides. Okay, so it's log of everything has to be equal. So here I get log of e to the x minus 2 equals log of y minus 4 on 3. And with my... Oh. Sorry. So with my um, log to e, this is going to cancel out. So I get x minus 2 equals, and then this stays the same, and then so the very last thing that I'm going to be doing is just adding 2, so x equals log of y minus 4 on 3 plus 2, so this is my final equation. Alright, so logs and e's, key thing to keep in mind for these when solving for x or when doing anything, is just e to the log of anything becomes anything. So whatever is in that area here, whatever that is, um, we get that. On the other hand, if we have the other way around, if we have log of e, log e to the power of anything, then in this case, again we get that same anything. I can just say that anything. So e to the log of some function, some internal function, equals that function. Log of e to that function equals that function. Um, now I wanted to do the last one just to demonstrate, again, um, this doesn't involve logarithms or exponents, but um, it does um, involve uh, inverse operations, so keeping track of this kind of thing. So in this case, um, the key operation that we're looking at is root, and the square root um, has its inverse is... 
uh, the square function. Or actually with any index, so if we have a to the 3, the operation that we do to undo that 3, we can think of it as just the fractional power. So this just equals a. If I have x squared plus 3x, and it's to the power of um, 2, then to undo this, I can do it to the power of a half, and I just get my x squared plus 3x. So we can think of fractional powers as undoing their, their normal exponents. Um, works the same even if we've got negatives. Um, but so in this case, if I want to solve for x, the first thing I need to do is be able to remove this root. And so I can either think of it as x minus 4 to the half, in which case the opposite of a half is 2, so I want to raise both sides to 2. Or I can just remember that squaring undoes a square root. Um, but either way, if I do it, do it like this, I'm going to have 2y plus 1 squared equals half and a squared cancel out, so I just get this x minus 4. And then finally, moving 4 to the other side, we get 2y plus 1 squared equals, uh, sorry, plus 4 equals x. Now you remember with um, the logarithm we had as well um, the, the functions looking being the reflection. Same thing happens here. So root x is like this. And x squared well, is like this. So they meet at 1, 1. They again have this line of symmetry through here. The only difference, and the thing that we need to be careful sometimes with these, is that the x squared, um, sorry, the root x, is only defined um, for positive. We don't get this negative half, whereas with the um, x squared function, we do have this extra bit going up here. But there's no, no thing going down here for the um, root x. So this is why, with this particular function, because the function is only defined for positive, um, if we're going in the other way around, so if we have, um, say, y, I don't know, do we have x squared? So if we have x plus 2 squared equals y, and I want to solve for x, in this case, when I take the square root of both sides, so I'm going to go to a half, and to a half, um, I need to remember that x plus 2 could be plus or minus square root of y. And be plus or minus. And this is a, a really tricky thing to do. It's just because we don't know with the y whether it was on this side or on this side. Um, and so we just need to keep into account that we do that. We might have a lot of problems that um, focus on this, but it's just something to be aware of. Okay, I hope you're all having a great trimester, and um, I'll see you during the week. Thanks.